Hi, this is Brett from Flight of the Concords. Thank you for being a member of 885XPN. Brett, you can hear your beard in the microphone. That's my beard. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's not a loud beard. Sorry about that. Hello, we're uh, Flight of the Concords from New Zealand. I'm Brett. Hello, I'm Jermaine. Um, and whenever we were in Los Angeles, we always listened to, um, uh, what is it? I don't know, I don't listen to it. To this radio, the one, this radio station that you're listening to. It's, it's the best radio station in, um, oh, that's available in this area. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Jermaine and Brett from the Flight of the Concords. They are in our studios here yeah. for what they've oh, yeah. Good morning, boys. Hello. Guys, were you doing this show at back home and then it just got transported to America? Or is this uh, a, an all-new idea for you? Teleported, yeah. We, we <laughs> teleported the idea over here. And then, uh, now we started about eight years ago. We are doing gigs, mm -hmm. doing comedy clubs. And, um, oh, so you started as comedians? Yeah, doing, okay. doing comedy venues. And then we played in like Edinburgh and Scotland and then... I uh, came over to America and played Aspen and Montreal, and then HBO asked us to do a show. Oh, so you did not have a show before. This HBO show is the first time you've done it on television. No, yeah. no this is the first time I made a, made a TV show. How yeah. about that? Wow. Were you guys uh, actors beforehand, comedians beforehand, musicians beforehand? What came first? Unemployment. Unemployment came first? <laughs> <laughs> I met the Flight of the Concords at a gig in Edinburgh in 2003. Uh, I remember they were playing in a, a, a tiny cave on the hill in old Edinburgh. And I'd heard that there are, there are these new guys in town who are playing a very good set of funny comedy songs. And now, normally when you hear people playing comedy songs, you run for the hills because they're usually absolutely dreadful. The Concords came on my radar about four or five years ago when we were working on the Aspen Comedy Festival. The following year, I happened to go to Edinburgh and I saw them and I was at the cave and I saw them sort of blow the room away and be fantastic. And I was like, wow, this is really extraordinary. And my feeling about comedy generally is when you see something extraordinary, you don't need to be a genius to notice it. It's like, hits you over the head kind of thing. And, it, and they did. Now, who, who do you like? What comedy or stand-up other, other, other groups do you like? I like The Muppets <laughs> and Leonard Cohen. That's interesting. Because uh, some of your songs would be a mix of The Muppets and Leonard Cohen. Mm. A, a great description. And um, Sam Cooke. Peter Cooke and Sam Cooke. Yeah. The Robin Williams. I like Robin Williams and Robbie Williams. <laughs> Jerry Lewis and Jerry Lee Lewis. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, I like Bill Cosby and, and Billy Idol. <laughs> now, how does the writing work? Um, do you end up writing together, or how's um, it? All, all different way. Some I uh, write by myself. Some Brett writes by himself, and a lot of them we write together. The, on the NBC process, they began to meet with writers, and that's how it's done in America, where you meet with writers, you find a comedy writer you're compatible with, yeah. and you develop a TV show, hopefully. And you either co-write it or they write it, and hopefully you keep your voice in the mix, your point of view. And what happened with them was we, you know, I think they really knew at the outset, but couldn't convince us that they needed to write it themselves. I slightly felt that they would be best served by having a show which kind of captured their best elements of the live show, but kept it with a narrative, which is kind of what we ended up with. James Bobin. He's like a military commander in terms of working with us. Yeah, we haggle over the time we start. Okay, can we start at 11? Nine. And 10 o'clock. All right, 10 o'clock. It's very funny. It's 10 till 6. <laughs> so it's 5 to 6. All right, 6 o'clock. <laughs> but it's 5 to 6. We're all exhausted. There's nothing funny happening in the room. Like, no. Should we go? He's like, no, it's not six o'clock. You know, we had to, you know, write a show together for the first time, and that was obviously an interesting idea because we'd worked together in a room, but we hadn't actually sat down to write dialogue or anything like that before. Luckily, with Brett and Jermaine, we spent a lot of time laughing at each other's jokes, and that's a very important part of it. And James went off and w wrote it with them, and they came in and pitched and sang a song in the pitch, and they and they loved it. It was three women who were in the the executives at HBO, and they were like, you know, in love with them, and so they picked it up to a script. Inner city life, inner city pressure, the concrete world is starting to get you. The city is alive, the city is expanding, living in the city can be demanding. You've pawned everything, everything you own, your toothbrush.
rubbish jar and a camera phone. You don't know where you're going, you cross the street. You don't know why you did, you walk back across the street. In a, in in a, a city, city, in a city, city of Charlie, take one. Seymour? Seymour? We knew pretty much the world we wanted to live in. We knew we wanted to be in New York because we wanted the show to be quite local. And I wanted to take elements of the Concords Act, which is kind of the innocence and their charm, and make create it on a, on a smaller scale in a real place. This is scene 12, take two, be Mark only. And raining. It was a very, very tough schedule. We were, we were shooting five days a week and they were working at weekends in a studio. So we were getting up every day at four o'clock in the morning. It's just. I mean, I, I'm used to it because obviously I've done it before, but they, I think Benjamin found it very hard. It was very different to what we thought making a TV show for America was going to be like. I'd done a few things on TV here and they were sort of low budget, and uh, I thought it was going to be pampered, what do you think, pampered wagons full of fruit bowls and drink. Getting, yeah, grapes fed to you and stuff like that. Even so if they just had some grapes. Or just some grapes. Just or anything some grapes. fed to you. Or even, yeah, some grape juice. We'd drive into work in the morning at 5 to be on set by 5.30 and I'd go to see them at 8 and they'd been asleep for two hours because they were supposed to be makeup up and fell asleep. And Jermaine would often fall asleep between takes. I mean, we were in a restaurant in Brooklyn filming a scene and we were literally just turning the scene around. We'd do it, we'd do it, putting the cameras on the other side of the shot. And Jermaine sat in the corner and I went, and no, it just left him for two seconds. I turned around, he's fast asleep on his back snoring. Well, I think the thing is I'm naturally a lazy person who's unfortunately... Um, without design, fallen into um, a line of work which re requires a lot of work. And, um, Laziness doesn't help. A lazy person <laughs> shouldn't be made to work as much as I have to. Now, which one of you was asleep on the floor in the other room? That was me. That, that was you. Jermaine, yeah. Jermaine? yeah. Early <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm sleep talking now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you've been doing today. We're working on Song Mermaids uh, for the show. And we're trying to make it sound awesome. At the moment, it sounds mediocre. Just tell us a little background about the show, how you put it together. Well, we had a huge back catalogue of songs, and so we started using them. Some worked better. I mean, we have one song about mermaids, so that meant that in the middle of one of the shows, we, we start seeing mermaids. It's hard to work in mermaids yeah. into, a, into a story. Yeah. Especially in the Lower East Side, you don't see very many. So what is water polo? Uh, it's like polo, but in the water. On seahorses? No, just swimming. OK. Beautiful swimming ladies. Yeah, swimming in the water, beautiful wow. ladies. Like mermaids? Yes, like mermaids. Oh, 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 oh. Mermaids. Now it was always a worry for me how all the songs would integrate into the show because if you watch a musical, most of the time when they start breaking out a song, you really feel like you're going to be sick because it's so embarrassing. But with the Brett and Jermaine characters, because they're not very good at expressing themselves, they when they break into song, you kind of accept that. And it's almost like a, 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 a voice in their head. It's the, it's, the, it's the inner voice of Jermaine and Brett speaking, which is nice to see in song. Mermaid, mermaid. Back in New Zealand, I, I was getting it on with lots of chicks. Who? Hey. Well, uh, Sarah Fitzpatrick, uh, Michelle Fitzpatrick, Claire Fitzpatrick. The list goes on. Well, that was all of them? Well, triple figures. No, that's not triple figures, that's three. We never really address how long they've been in America for, but um, it's supposed to be about a year or two. The idea they've been there, they have made a friend, a fan. You know, they're doing things, but they're not like, it's not all. It's not from the very beginning, like the first moments in America, like always oh, everyone fat. You know, it's not, it's not, that's what jokes, we don't like those jokes really. Look, I don't know how they do things back in England. New, New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, whatever, I don't really give a shit. But the point is, going out with your best friend's ex-girlfriend while you still live with your best friend, 
that kind of thing would be considered a little weird here in the US. Dave is kind of represents America in many ways for us. He, he's their mentor, and we thought, we thought it'd be funny if Dave is a man who has super confidence where he doesn't really deserve to have any confidence in himself because he, um, he thinks he knows everything and he knows nothing. Dave, we need to borrow some of your cool clothes. You want to borrow my clothes? Yeah, I need something that's cool but also sexy. I think Dave is uh, I secretly a little bit excited that two musicians think he's cool and they maybe look up to him a little bit and that maybe hasn't really happened to him a lot in his life. Oh, hey guys. Hey, Ma. Hey, Ma. hey whoa. <laughs> it's crazy meeting you here, huh? <laughs> what, outside our house? <laughs> yeah, Brett. <laughs> you are so funny. I love your sense of humor. I play Mel, who's uh, the Flight of the Concords um, only fan in America and in probably the world, according to the to the to the reality of the show, not the real reality, which I know. I'm outnumbered. Most people we cast in the show, we do from tapes of a lot of people. But with Kristen, our producer, just came in with a DVD and said, I saw this girl on the weekend doing stand-up, and she, and she put it on, and it was Kristen. I don't think even even listened to what she was saying. We just went, yep, after about 30 seconds. Yeah, maybe even 15 seconds. Thought she's great, she'll be good. Mel is really passionate, and she's, um, you know, let's face it, she's pretty smart. Like. They're both super sexy and really talented. Do you think she has a favorite? You know, I don't think so, but I think I do think that and her um, intense passion uh, probably oscillates between the two from time to time, just based on who's giving her a little bit more attention. So uh, have you and um, Mel been following us through this whole during this whole tour, tour Doug? Uh, it seems like it. Mel's in charge of the itinerary. She said she just wanted to get away on a road trip. Get away from it all. The character that plays your agent, is he your agent or manager? Our or manager, Reese Darby, yeah, Reece Darby. the character of Murray. Yeah. Murray, he's fantastic. He's, uh, he's he... all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's really good. He, this always, is, he I... makes us laugh a lot. Those are the hardest scenes to do. OK, guys, band meeting. Brett. Yep. Jermaine. Jermaine? Well, you, obviously. Yeah, well, you're here. Yeah, well, I'm here, so why do I have to say that I'm here? Well, it's just I've got it all written down, you know. Yeah, but I'm just here, so if you can see me here, I don't... Murray present. See, even I do it. It's just it's how we do it. Reese was a stand-up, and we'd see him. We'd seen him play and stuff, and he actually suggested that he would play our manager, because we were looking for someone who mm. wanted them to be from New Zealand. And um, I don't know how you felt, but I wasn't sure because his stand-up was really big and we wanted to, to be really subtle. Back then I had um, five different voices that I, they could choose from. I said, which voice would you like me to use? And uh, Jermaine chose voice number three, which was my own voice. I spent one year doing lights for his show and a lot of it was... <laughs> a couple of cars for you. <laughs> this is Tyrone, I saw it straight, so I don't do it as well as Reese. But, yeah. you know, it wasn't the sort of thing that uh, we were doing because we were doing, making a mockumentary yeah, and yeah. we wanted very uh, realistic performances. But um, to our surprise, it turned out he was a, a comedy realistic genius. Yeah. They gave me a call. I was in New Zealand um, working on another TV show there. Jermaine said, um, drop what you're doing and come and do this one. So I said, uh, all right, what voice do you want? He said, number three. So I've got two bands now. You'll just manage us both. No, I can't. I'm not even supposed to manage one band. I'm supposed to be working at the New Zealand consulate, Brett. Murray, do you think you could find another cubicle? Oh, sorry, Greg. Yeah, right. Let's just calm down, all right? We shouldn't even be arguing in front of the map. It's not right. Yeah, you're right. Brett and Jermaine being from New Zealand didn't really have that much of an effect on the show itself in terms of production, uh, other than the fact they wouldn't start work before 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but other than that, well, they're musicians, so who, no, no musicians from any part of the world would ever do that. Um, and no, it was much more the fact they hadn't done a TV show before. That was much more the fact that they're from New Zealand. Because uh, not having done a TV show before, you don't necessarily understand what you're letting yourself in for and how much hard work you're about to have to you know, do because t TV production is crazy. And you, you often find yourself working seven days a week for months on end with little sight of any relief. Um, but that was probably a good thing, because if they don't at the time, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have done it. They're turning kids into slaves just to make cheaper sneakers. 
what's the real cost? Cause the sneakers don't seem that much cheaper. Why are we still paying so much for sneakers when you got them made by little slave kids? What are you over here? In the episode where we get mugged, it was the coldest New York's been in eight years. No filming. one was outside except for our film crew. Yeah, filming outside, they would they had bottles of water um, to have a drink if you know you need a drink, and you'd pick up the bottle of water and it would turn to ice. Yeah, well, so you, do you guys want water? She, she gives us this this six pack of ice blocks, <laughs> it's totally frozen. So, sorry, someone left it outside. The guys were driven so hard because they had so much writing to do, so much acting to do, so much performing to do, recording music. It was kind of like a superhuman task for and, and unreasonable expectations, which they delivered on. Because even before we started, they had to write 10 scripts because they couldn't really write so much when we started production because they were shooting all the time. So they, and they pulled it off and it was kind of incredible. Um, interior apartment day later, Brett is on the sofa reading New Zealand news, Jermaine reading the Concourse magazine. Brett folds the paper purposely and is just about to say something when a sandwich hits Jermaine in the face. Oh, a sandwich in my face. <laughs> Mary, my face. Oh. Yeah, well, I warned you I'd throw a sandwich at your face. Brett, I've never seen such bad behaviour. Hell, look, don't be such a d dickhead. No <laughs> sandwiches. If she doesn't even need to split up the band, I'm leaving. I quit. Yeah, well, you quit last week, so... Brett, you left last week. That's yeah, well, I'm leaving this week again. This time, longer than a week. Brett. Just wanna do something special for all the ladies in the world. Oh, yes. Just wanna do something special for all the ladies in the world. And cut. And the girl. Right? Welcome to Britt McKenzie and Jermaine Clement. I really want to talk to you about the show that's going to start on HBO uh, this coming Sunday at 10.30. Um, yeah, it's, um, so give, it's, give me a, it's give our me a, new show. Yeah, well, it's our only show. We've never made a show before. <laughs> tell it's me a little bit one. about this. Now, this is the trials and tribulations of a duo. Trying to make it in New York. <laughs> The show was released on HBO. We did a small tour of America. We played New York. We played East, a few shows on the East Coast, New York and Philadelphia, and then um, the Bonnaroo Festival, which was done in Tennessee, near Nashville, and then across to the West Coast, the San Francisco... No, we did... Seattle. Seattle, Los Angeles. That was it, right? Yep. It was quite a, a small tour, but that was just to kind of promote the, the TV show starting. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is the time of the year when most TV shows go away and everybody complains there's nothing on. This is something that you need to check out. Flight of the Concords on HBO. They are New Zealand's fourth most popular guitar-based digi-bongo acapella <laughs> rap funk comedy folk duo. Fourth. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> the show airs Sunday nights uh, at 10.30 on HBO after Entourage. By the way, the good news is the band is at the El Rey tomorrow night. Bad news is already sold out. Can you explain your sign to me? Um, it says, we'll dance robot for spare ticket. <laughs> so you, uh, you want to come into the show? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Has that been hard to find tickets? It's been sold out. Can you tell me about your t-shirt? Oh, um, I knew I was coming to the concert and I thought, what's well, the best way to show them that I love them than to make them a shirt and sat down and it took me three hours and I did it. <laughs> I think they'd better get ready for massive notoriety, you know, entourage, followers, and oh, I don't know, just, they just, maybe they should just go home and hide for a while, you know. I don't, I don't know whether they're ready, are they? Very anxious to meet our guests today. Flight of the Concord have joined us. Uh, Brett and Jermaine are, are here. 
reading over uh, what you guys have been through in, in your career so far, I have to think that what is happening um, through this HBO show is is kind of taking it to another level. Are you experiencing any of that yet? We were so busy making the show, filming it, and then editing it, and and that I didn't even really think about the public reaction. Uh, I certainly didn't even didn't even cross my mind that we were going to become uh, sort of B grade celebrities, uh, maybe C grade, but um, C list celebrities. Um, you don't even know the I don't even know category I don't know, for celebrities. I don't even know what list we're on. Again, without emotion, the, the humans, humans are, are dead, 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 People do seem to really like them, so much so that they feel very happy just to come up and say hello all the time, as though, oh yeah, it's really, you are Brett and Jermaine from the show, when they're not, obviously they're Brett and Jermaine from New Zealand and they are real people in their own right. You know, people will joke with you like an old friend would, but you're not expecting it. And sometimes you're not sure if they are an old friend. I, I think if if they were to do it again, they might call themselves Brent and Jerome so they could distinguish themselves from the actual characters because I think people just assume they're the same, and they're not. The, the 2020 festival this year is at uh, the McCaw Hall, which is Seattle's opera house. It's where the ballet performs. It's, you know, really one of the highest-end facilities in the city, and, and it's a large facility. I think it's... Seats 3,400 people. <laughs> this is where we saw Nancy Sinatra. Oh my god. It's tiny. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, what was that guy? What was that guy? Put up there. Like, we like venues that are shaped a little bit more like. This show is the fastest sellout in this whole history when it first went on sale. It, it sold out in a heartbeat. It was really fast. We were watching it online. We were watching uh, the tickets sell, and you could actually see it, you know, go graphically as jump, 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 boom, sold out. I mean, really an insane response to the show. show I think they probably thought was a full stop but it's really not a full stop it's like a you know, multiplied by it really I mean you know because once you're on air and people like you particularly in America obviously then inevitably people will say well oh maybe you could be in this film or maybe you could be in this TV show and it's not really going to be the Concord show isn't a full stop it really isn't the end of it it's just the beginning of a whole lot of different stuff they could do as the Concords. The Concords are the fourth most popular New Zealand folk act and I, I'm very happy with the fourth I'm, uh, the first, second, and third, I, I'm not that keen on right now. Five through ten, maybe. You know what? Whatever happens, I'm proud to be a part of it because I feel like I was involved in a really unique television show. I hope um, that we can do another season just on a um, selfish level so that my character can return. Um... Oh, you're out of time. So thank you, but I do have other interviews. Rosie! You got the taxi ready? I've got to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little, little noise. What is that? Can you guys hear that? Yeah, it sounds yeah. like. Is it the um, gel waving or something? Yeah, I can try the gel. We can't move with this gel movement. You guys just stay put. Stay put. I'm not. I can't concentrate. The gel. Sounds, sorry, sorry. Sounds guys. like a ghost. Is it? Is it in here? Oh. Out there. No, it's outside. It's outside. I don't care where it is. Just get rid of it. <laughs> Shall I go get rid of it? <laughs> yes, you get rid of it. <laughs> I don't care who's okay, getting, getting rid of it. Really oh, that's it. That's it. That's what we were hearing. Are we still rolling? Yeah. Is that the noise? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, it's terrible, that noise. Huh?